Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a German exclusive and this is a Teeling Whiskey Rosé wine cask finish in cooperation with the vineyard here in Germany called um, Reichsrat von Bühl. So now this is whiskey base number 217276. Originally, there was only one shop in Germany that had any of these bottles, and that was whiskey.de, so Horst Luning. And um, there's 900 bottles in total. Now, the color is very, very nice. Natural color, even though it says here, um, oh, it doesn't even say that there, it says it here, uh, natural character. Whatever natural character means. Teeling, I've complained about this before. I'm going to continue complaining about it. No one in the planet of Earth knows what natural character means. Natural color, we know. Non-chilled filtered, we know. Put that please on the label and we, the geeks, will be happy. Natural character will just mean you're receiving more and more criticism from at least this guy over here in Germany. All right, so now they, Teeling, have worked with Reichsrat von Bühl before. Now, this is their um, Riesling cask, Grand Cru edition. And this is also their small batch series. So it's a blended Irish whiskey. So there is grain and there is malt in here. Now, one of the questions that I sometimes have to ask myself, and I don't always know all the questions, do the distilleries, usually in Scotland I do know this, but I'm not sure about Ireland, do the distilleries ever actually put a combination of malt and grain into one cask and let it just mature for 10, 12, 15 years? Or do they actually let it mature separately? The malt in a cask, the grain in a cask, you blend it together and then you finish it, for example, in a rosé cask here from, um, from the Pfalz in Germany or here from that Riesling cask from Germany as well. I assume that this whiskey, uh, according to what I've read online, it's six years of age, about, and it does say on the back that it has a 24-month finish in these rosé casts, these dry rosé. Now, um, online at whiskey.de, for example, they write down that this is a Pinot Noir cask. Hmm. Nowhere on the bottle or in the box does it say Pinot Noir. Somehow, somewhere, someone has more information than I do. Now, it also says here that it's non chilled filtered, or not chilled filtered. Nowhere on the box, nowhere on the bottle does that say that. Hmm. Um, nowhere does it say no color added. Hmm. Yes, I do know that Teeling does not do that, but I've mentioned that before. Now, the next thing that I'm going to criticize, I know, I do like Teeling, um, what they're doing there, but there's just some little things that bug me. For example, it says here, since 1787. Down here in the glass, since 1787. Is that really, really necessary? It does say reborn 2015 up here. Thank you for putting that on there. That's all I have to say. All right, so I like this. This I have a problem with. Why? If I smell, I get sulfur. Now, wine casks are typically sulfured so that they do not spoil during transport. For some reason, at least either I'm blind to the sulfur on the, on the Riesling or they just didn't do it. Now, according to my information that I have is you can send casks from one country, Germany, to another country, Ireland, for example, in a container that is refrigerated. And therefore, the sulfur candle that they put in the cask to actually protect this um, cask from spoiling is not necessary. The same thing you can do is to actually just send it in the cooler months of the year. So don't send it in 
May, June, July, August, September, maybe even not October. We're going to have 80 degree weather in October, which we I don't think we've ever had in the middle of October before this year. But hey, um, November, December, January, February, March, those are the months that are very cool and you don't have to worry about the spoilage of the casks. Which means, of course, these things have to be coordinated. Which means you would have to empty the rosé wine casks in those winter months. You'd have to have enough casks to fill a container, put that container onto a uh, truck, and get it up into Dublin within a reasonable amount of, um, 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 reasonable amount of time. So now that what usually happens is we don't have an entire container full of, of casks. We have pallets. And so the pallets go to a, a distribution hub. Uh, maybe there's five pallets. You can actually wonderfully send a wine barrique, a cask, 225 liters on one pallet. So you'd have a pallet, three, four, a 900 bottles at 46%, according to my calculations, three casks four casks max don't forget there's only two years of maturation you don't really lose that much um whiskey to the angel shares in two years and these casks held wine beforehand so the water the i sorry the oak should actually be already um have liquid in it so it's not going to soak up like a new um virgin oak cask would and so you could just actually just get that over there and um, have that there quickly. But if you don't send a container, but just pallets, it takes longer for the pallets to be loaded on the container, the can the container to go through the customs. The customs, everyone has to have their papers filled out for all the different pallets there. And the things get unloaded and sent and so on. It just takes a couple weeks longer in my experience. And so um, if you can have your own dedicated container, it's going to be much, much better and much quicker. And I'm sure... Sure, I can imagine, let's say that word, that Teeling would be able to buy enough <coughs> cask from um, Reichsrat von Bühl to actually fill up at least a 20-foot container. Now, if you don't know anything about wine, and me, I'm not the best expert on wine, but I do know a little bit, we actually have here a vineyard that produces 450,000 bottles of wine a year. In my personal opinion, that's a lot, 450,000. I know there are vineyards that produce much, much, much more, but 450,000 bottles a year is not bad, to be honest. And um, they've been around now since 1849, so it's been a while, and they, are, they actually have organic wine, organic certified wine here um, from the region called the Pfalz. Now, there are the, the largest area in Germany for wine from the area as well as the amount of wine produced. It's called Rheinhessen. And the second largest is called the Pfalz. And so, um, beautiful, beautiful area there. And for me, for southern Germany, beautiful, beautiful. We have the, the um, German wine street that goes through there. Just great. So, this, as I said, is a sulfured cask. Error. I'm going to use the word error. All right. Wine should not, I'm sorry, wine should not taste like a sulfur bomb and whiskey definitely should not either. And if you've ever had those camping matches, you like them. That's that sulfur moment that I'm getting here. And that destroys the tasting notes for me. So a whiskey that could be for someone else, a B or even a C whiskey turns into a D whiskey for me just because the whiskey has been, I'm not going to say tainted, I'm going to say contaminated. Sorry, I'm being very extreme, but that's what I feel. Contaminated by this sulfur aroma, these sulfur flavors that do not belong in the whiskey. All right, so this is Cooley Juice, six years old, about two years of a finish in these rosé casks from Germany. I should be getting fresh strawberries mixed with a very juicy um, raspberry note, a little bit of a grape skin and um, a tiny little, a little bit of facets of um, pear is what the tasting notes should be. On the taste, I should get um, rhubarb crumble with whipped cream, 
combined with a very, very light citrus fruit and grapefruit notes. Cheers. What do I get? I get a tingly sulfur moment on my tongue. Behind that, there might be a little bit of strawberry. There might be a little bit of rhubarb. There might be a tiny little bit of uh, raspberries. Now, what I do notice is that it's, um, it is a creamy whiskey. I have the feeling that the malt percentage is higher than normal for a small batch series whiskey. It just might be the age, the six plus two, the eight years almost in total. That actually did um, a nice, nice job here. If I go over to the Riesling cask mature, it says here that it's been finished for 18 months. And I think I read somewhere that it's not six years, but it's more of a four year. So five and a half years versus almost eight years. This actually gets a little bit more of a type of spirit forward moment. There's even a sharp alcohol bite on this in comparison. No sulfur, and I can actually enjoy and um, evaluate this whiskey according to its merits and not tainted or contaminated with that sulfur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has a very unique nice moment going on there the mineral of the riesling really harmonizes very well with that blended malt um, blended um irish whiskey here 48 euros even 44 euros i've seen it for some places already if i'm giving it a d for taste i have to give it a d for money now imagine you are not sulfur sensitive like i am I'm going to use the word oversensitive to sulfur even. This could actually be a solid C, C plus whiskey. The value for money could be a C as well, C, C minus. Um, 50 euros for a no age statement is a little bit much. But to be very honest, who has ever used a rosé cask to finish anything? Teeling, and then we have Penelope, bourbon rosé cask finish from the Cooper series. We have Penelope um, Bourbon Rosé Cask Finish, limited release from four grain. And we have Penelope Bourbon Rosé Cask uh, Finish, um, a four-year-old this time, from 2022. Uh, that's batch three, batch four of the that. And we have a whiskey from Tasmania, from Ho Hobart Whiskey, um, to me, Tasmanian single malt, um, ex-bourbon cask, and a finish in rosé. And that's it. That's all that Whiskey Base knows about. So three American whiskeys, one Australian whiskey, and one um, Irish whiskey. Question of the day, why are not more people using rosé casks? I've known a lot of red wine casks, Bordeaux, and I don't know what they're all called. I've known some white wine casks, Riesling. But no one is using, hardly anyone is using rosé, why not? Maybe we don't use oak wooden casts that often with rosé but maybe there's another reason and maybe you can write that down here in the comments all right so teeling continue experimenting now my last criticism point the name jack teeling now this is probably coolie juice jack actually worked at the cooling distillery for a few years so he put his name on here what I would like to see, and that's a question of how much was the master distiller and master blender involved in this. So here is a blue, which means it was actually produced in Dublin. And this is here from our, our master blender here, Alex Chekhov and um, Chasko, Chasko. And I would love if his name would be on these small batch collections as well. But maybe Jack actually made it. Who knows? Here we have Jack's name and almost all the other things we have Jack's names on them well as well. So, but Alex's, his name would be just a great, great addition to show in what direction the distillery is really going. 
All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. If you can find a small batch um, series, they are doing interesting things. There was a Aquavit cast that I recently did. There's this Riesling cask. Um, there was a um, pineapple rum cast that I did that I did not like. Um, there's that rosé cast. The sulfur really killed it for me. They're doing exciting, um, unique things at Teeling, and I must commend them for that. Keep on going, but be careful. Maybe reject a few sulfur casks if at all needed to. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others. Maybe even share this video with someone. And I'll see you back here real soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.